Hello. Welcome to the UC Davis Laboratory at Lake Tahoe. Actually, it's not just one lab, but several different types of labs. In the biology lab, we study the different types of plants and animals that live in the lake, streams, wetlands, and forest. Now see those microscopes on the bench? We use those to look at the phytoplankton and zooplankton that live in Lake Tahoe. Phytoplankton are also called algae. They're tiny little floating plants, and the phyto part of their name means they need sunlight to grow, just like any other plants. The zooplankton are tiny little animals that live in the water and eat the phytoplankton. Now there are many kinds of phytoplankton and zooplankton. Monica is an aquatic ecologist. She studies things like how and where the phytoplankton live, how they get their nutrition, and which kind of zooplankton eat them. Hi Monica, what are you looking at? Hello. I'm looking at lake water samples from Lake Tahoe. Right now I'm looking at phytoplankton samples that have been collected from 200 feet down. That's where a lot of the phytoplankton are in Lake Tahoe because that's where the nutrients are. So come on and let's see what we find there. Well, that must be a very powerful microscope. I can see a lot of diatoms. Now, diatoms are the most common type of algae in Lake Tahoe. Zooplankton like to feed on them because they're very nutritious. There are so many other types of algae we can see. There are cryptomonads, chrysophytes, and dinoflagellates. Zooplankton can be easily seen through a microscope without very much magnification. What do you see, Monica? There are a lot of zooplankton. And right now I'm looking at zooplankton samples that have been collected with the plankton net in Lake Tahoe. So plankton are generally very important in lakes because they feed on algae. By feeding on algae, the zooplankton help to keep Lake Tahoe from turning green. Now you can see two different species that look as if they're jumping around. The red one is called dioptimus and is very common during the summer in Lake Tahoe. The red pigment acts like a sunscreen and protects them from harmful sunlight. The grayish one you see is called epichura. There are also other less common zooplankton. This one is called Bosmina, and what a surprise, there's a Daphnia. Daphnia are very important animals in lakes because they provide high quality food for fish and the fish really like to eat them. Nowadays, we don't find them very often because of changes in Lake Tahoe's food web caused by the introduction of the mysis shrimp. Speaking of which, this big guy is a mysis shrimp. Let's ask Bob Richards, world-renowned expert on mysis shrimp, where this big-eyed creature came from. Mysis shrimp were introduced into Lake Tahoe back in the 1960s to hopefully provide a food source uh, of intermediate size to supplement the, the foods available to the different fishes in the lake. It turned out probably not to be such a great thing. And the, the reason is that those zooplankton that were already here we're providing a majority of the food sources for some of the kokanee salmon and the juvenile fishes that live in the lake. So when mice came along and started preying on these uh, other zooplankton, they actually cut the food sources down instead of increasing the food source available for other fishes. The main lesson learned was that you really need to do good, hard scientific research on things, especially if you're going to change the environment by introducing a foreign organism into the water. Uh, because they do bring about a lot of changes that you don't expect. Thanks, Bob. That's actually a great lesson for all ecosystems. Species introductions can have irreversible effects. Now, there are other introduced species in Lake Tahoe, many of which were accidentally introduced. Water milfoil is an aquatic plant that first appeared in the Tahoe Keys, but is now spread to other shallow bays and marinas around the lake. It's a constant battle to keep it from spreading further. Sudeep Chandra has been studying the fish that have been accidentally introduced to Lake Tahoe. Sudeep, what do we know about these species? The bluegill and bass species have been introduced into the lake sometime in the last 10 to 15 years. And we're concerned about these species because they affect native species by feeding on them. They can also compete with native fish species by eating their food. You really have to ask yourself a question. It's more of a moral question. And the question is, do we want these non-native species within our Lake Tahoe? We're already fighting pretty hard to protect the lake to keep it clear. And so what I like to think about is we should also protect the lake by keeping its native biology intact. Something to think about. Well, I need to prepare some more samples. 
I'll see you the next time you stop by the lab.